Hi guys, uh, I've got my banana pie here. Just thought I'd do a first run so I, I'd walk you through kind of the steps that are involved, uh, just like they're involved with the Raspberry Pi. So I've got my SD card ready to go. I'm just going to uh, fire up the laptop and we'll see you in a second. All right, so here we are at lemaker.org, who are the makers of the banana pie. That's lemaker.org. You can see it up top here. Uh, this is uh, this is basically the one-stop shop resource uh, for all things banana pie. Uh, you can have a quick look at some of the stuff that's available on their website. Of course, it gives specs and details, uh, and uh, lists the supported OS. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back up to the top here and to the uh, resources tab, click downloads, and uh, the one I'm looking for is uh, Raspbian for banana pie. Now, the reason I'm going to go with Raspbian as opposed to any of the other uh, distributions is just that I'm familiar with Raspbian because of the stuff that I've done previously with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and that's the only reason I'm choosing it. Uh, on my home computer, uh, I do use Lubuntu, uh, but I don't have any experience using a Python or doing any of the, any of the GPIO stuff uh, in Lubuntu. So that's, again, why I'm sticking with Raspbian. Of course, uh, you're welcome to make your own choice at this point, and uh, checking out the different uh, available downloads would probably be a pretty interesting project. Of course, you can see there's Android, uh, or Fedora, or Arch Linux, OpenSUSE, and uh, Scratch. Uh, of course, there's another version of Lubuntu there, uh, but as I say, I'm gonna go back for the Raspbian version. Uh, a variety of places that I can download it from. I don't know, I'm just gonna pick one, uh, Google, because I know uh, of Google. So uh, here I am. Uh, how do I download it? Download the current version. It hasn't been scanned for viruses. Do it anyways. And, uh, let's save it. Okay. So uh, in the corner of my screen here, it says it's going to be about eight minutes before it's finished downloading. So I'll leave you there, and uh, we'll join back up in a few minutes once I've downloaded the image and I'm getting ready to put it on the SD card. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, uh, I've downloaded the Raspbian image. Uh, it's just a compressor, I've just got to decompress it here for a second. Um, uh, I have a little ritual that I do to uh, put these files, these file systems, these OSs onto, uh, onto drives. Of course, this will be uh, individual for what programs you've got installed, whether you have a, something that'll, a tool that'll help you do this easily or not, uh, whether you're using Mac OS or not. Uh, I'm, of course, using Mac OS, so uh, you get to watch as, as I do mine, but of course it's uh, different for everybody. Um, the first thing I like to do is name some of this in a sane way so that I can uh, easily find it uh, when I'm looking for it. And then the next thing I have to do is find the uh, attached SD card. So it's disk util list. And there it is, uh, disk one. So uh, next thing to do is unmount it. So that's disk util Next it's sudo disk dump, do bs1m, uh, and then the input file uh, is what I've just created, so it's tilde desktop, and uh, rasp, dump, g, and then the output file equals dev disk one. At 3.7 gigs, it's going to take a few minutes for this image to write to the card. So I'm just going to pop out and grab a coffee. I'll be back in a second. Okay, great. Looks like we were successful. Uh, so all that's left to do now is just eject the disk. So, sudo
Great. I'll see you again in a minute. Okay, getting pretty close now. Here's my banana pie. As you know, this is the SD card that we just formatted a few minutes ago. HDMI to, of course, plug it into the TV. I've got a LAN cable. I've got a keyboard that I'm going to be using, which has a mouse on its side. Uh, just here, I've got my USB charger adapter. Uh, this is a 1 amp this side, and this is a 2.1 amp that side. Uh, an interesting fact about the Banana Pi, it actually accepts 2 amps in, unlike the Raspberry Pi, which only accepts 1.2 amps. Of course, we've got my micro USB cable here. Oh, and I've got a, a, wi a wireless N dongle that I'll try to uh, set up shortly after. As you guys know, I love to SSH into these, these sorts of devices, so I'm hoping to do that pretty soon. Great. Uh, next up, we'll uh, get it set up on the TV. All right, here we go. First boot of the banana pie. Or it'll switch over to Chromecast. Huh. Interesting. It actually turned off the input that it was in. There we go. Oh, it booted up pretty quickly, straight into a Windows interface. It's obviously LXDE. Okay, uh, some things that I noticed straight away. Um, lost the edge here, so that's uh, an overscan issue. Just gonna grab the keyboard. All right, well, obviously there's uh, some stuff to look at around here. Try to figure out how do you uh, customize it? It's interesting to note uh, that this boots straight into the uh, LXDE interface. There's no more start X or command line stuff like you have to do with the uh, Raspberry Pi, which is interesting. Um, but it's uh, definitely going to be worth having a look around. Well, as much as I don't want to bore you with me just poking around, the worst part of the slower Raspberry Pi processor is the internet. So let's just have a quick, quick little look here. Now you can see here uh, that this is thinking that the key is actually still Raspberry Pi. So you can kind of tell that not much has changed from the Raspberry Pi. Also, I'm noticing here on the left, you can see OCR resources. That still has a picture of the Raspberry Pi. I hope you can see that. That's top left, the icon that I'm pointing at. So not a lot of customization has happened. Well, let's just go to lemaker.org. Have a look around. Well, stuff is loading. That's a, that, and look at that, that animation's just switched over. For those of you who have Raspberry Pi, so you'll know what I'm talking about. That is a major, major step forward. Wow, you can actually scroll. Okay, well, I'm gonna say that this might actually be a usable, just desktop, uh, when you see stuff like that happening. Wow. Wow, that is a major advance on what, uh, on what you'll find with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, probably not that exciting, me just moving a window around saying that's that's awesome, but it is a major improvement. Again, that is the dual core processor that's, that's doing it. Now, I doubt very much we're gonna have any luck uh, with YouTube uh, loading, because I haven't customized anything or added Flash, so it would surprise me, it surprise me greatly. Uh, just clicking a random video. No Adobe Flash Player or an HTML5 browser, uh, neither of which are currently installed. Um, okay, well, I have a little bit of playing around to do. Uh, so far, so far, so good. So far, it seems like this is a snappy little system, uh, and it might actually work as a desktop. And for those of you who have Raspberry Pis, you know that that is just not the case. Although the Raspberry Pi does great at other projects, um, it's just not a great uh, desktop replacement. And this, so far, I'm, I mean, 
It seems like it's working pretty well. Okay, more soon. I think what I'm going to do is uh, set up some of the other bits. I'm going to do that by connecting uh, via Wi-Fi. So I've already inserted the Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, but it doesn't see the Wi-Fi dongle. There. Could not get status from WPA supplicant. Well, I'll try a different Wi-Fi card. Back shortly. So just a minute ago, I plugged in a Wi-Fi dongle that always works with my Raspberry Pis. Like, I trust it because it always works with my Raspberry Pis. Well, it didn't work with my Banana Pi, so I plugged in one of the Wi-Fi dongles USB that I have that definitely doesn't work with the Raspberry Pi. Like, definitely, definitely doesn't work with it. And it worked. So uh, I'm just going to set up Wi-Fi here. I won't, uh, I won't force you to watch me doing that, but I uh, just thought I'd let you know. Okay, more soon. Fantastic. I've got the Wi-Fi dongle working. So now all that's left to do is just to uh, turn off this Windows interface and then I'll uh, back up my card so that I have one that's always ready as a project basis. Uh, so enable boot to desktop, console, text console requiring login default. That's what I want. That should be done now. Finish and I'm just going to uh, reboot. Uh, which my TV will kick me up to my Chromecast. But anyways, uh, that's pretty cool. So now I'm going to power down and I'll copy that card over. Okay, so I've inserted the drive and what I'm going to do now is just repeat some of the steps from before. So disk util list to make sure that it's still, oh, well, it hasn't properly taken it. Let me just jiggle the card a little bit here. There we go. It's R disk one again. Disk one there, but I'll use R disk to do it. So first things first, I've got to uh, unmount it. It's successful. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is do a disk dump. So I'm going to disk dump at block size 1 meg. The input file this time will be the the SD card, the drive itself, so I'm going to put that in. And then the output file uh, equals tilde for the local. And this time I'm just going to do a desktop because I can move it afterwards. I'm going to call it banana pie uh, preconfig. Uh, 2014.ing. All right, great. So as soon as this is finished backing up, uh, we'll have our full working usable uh, banana pie pre-config. Uh, what this means is I always have a restore point that I can go back to, uh, or when I get another banana pie, which I suspect I will do, uh, what I'll be able to do is just uh, use this card and it'll instantly work uh, with the settings that I want, with my network pre-configured, uh, it won't be booting to desktop, uh, so I'll just be able to start my project uh, straight away. Great. Well, thanks for watching. Of course, you can check out my Raspberry Pi videos. Uh, you can check out any future Banana Pi videos that I have or haven't made by the time you're watching this. Of course, I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to link any projects that you're up to in the comment section below. Please subscribe to check out any future videos that I make for either the Raspberry Pi or the Banana Pi. And if you really enjoyed the video, of course, you can buy me a coffee in the About section below. Thanks again for watching.